Hello and welcome to the Monday, January 30th, 2023 edition of the Sands Internet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Microsoft's Exchange server is still, well, one of the favorite targets for a wide range of attackers. Even with all the patches applied, it may, well, uh, just be a matter of time for new vulnerabilities uh, to be discovered. In response, Microsoft published a blog post that should help administrators to keep Exchange up to date with future updates or even help you install the current updates if you haven't gotten around to that yet. Some uh, may disagree with one of the statements in the blog post that updating Exchange servers is straightforward, but well, uh, maybe after you are reading Microsoft's guidance, it will at least be easier. The blog post also highlights the Exchange Server Health Checker, a tool that you can use to identify Exchange servers that are missing any of the updates. Exchange updates are not part of the Windows Server updates, so make sure you apply both. You need the Exchange update and the Server update. The Exchange update you usually download separately. And remember that mitigations that you may have seen only buy you time. They're not meant to replace patches, so always apply your patches. And we have seen, of course, some high profile compromises that uh, happened because people sort of relied too much on these mitigations. You may have been receiving a large number of automated phone calls offering real estate and mortgage services recently. Well, in response now, the United States Federal Communication Commission, the FCC, has taken a somewhat unusual step to send a cease and desist letter to Twilio. Twilio, if you're not familiar with that, it's a very popular choice to implement sort of automated calling services due to the relatively simple API. I've used it like for some multi-factor authentication uh, and such, but uh, it appears that spammers have also discovered that, well, services like Twilio, of course, are easy to automate, which is, of course, what they are all about. And something that Twilio now has to figure out how they're able to sort of discriminate against uh, these uh, illegal uh, spam calls. The letter uh, sent to Twilio by the FCC threatens to have downstream providers block all traffic from Twilio. This is sort of why I really mentioned that uh, if you're relying on Twilio for some services, well, uh, I hope uh, Twilio works this out and probably chances are pretty good that they'll find a way uh, to comply with this order. But uh, if uh, this threat uh, should happen, then of course, service that you're running within Twilio may no longer work either. The FCC has sent letters like this uh, to other providers in the past, but uh, Twilio appears to be by far the largest uh, company that uh, they are threatening with completely disconnecting them from other operators. And Palo Alto published a blog post discussing a new version of the PlugX malware that spreads via USB drives. Uh, There appears to be a bit of a resurgence of malware spreading uh, via USB. This particular version is using some new tricks that uh, conceal the malware on the USB stick. The malware is stored in a directory that is named using a Unicode non-breaking space as its name. Uh, This character cannot be displayed. Well, it's only a space after all, but not actually a normal uh, space. And as a result, uh, Windows does not actually acknowledge that this directory exists if you're opening up uh, that uh, USB stick in uh, Explorer. Uh, Windows link file is then used to point to the malware inside that directory and to execute it. So if the user clicks on the link file, they'll execute the malware and the probability of the user clicking on this link is enhanced by actually making it look like a drive. So there's a little drive icon displayed. So you're opening a drive, you don't see anything else but a drive icon. You may just 
click again and uh, see what happens. Well, what happens is that, of course, uh, this will trigger the malware to spread. It will also, in some versions of this malware, copy any Word and PDF documents from your system into that hidden directory. So it could also then lead to data exfiltration. Well, then just uh, two quick news items. Uh, one is uh, yet more uh, kind of shady, they're being referred to here, uh, applications in the uh, Google App Store. 20 million downloads for them. As usual, be careful what you download. Secondly, there is an update for the Tails Linux distribution. That's the Linux distribution that you, well, use if you want to stay anonymous. So, uh, update this, it pretty much sort of uh, brings the components that make up Tails uh, up to date. Well, and this is it for today. Uh, thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. <laughs>